So today we're going to be doing the review of Supercross the Game 2. Usually I do this a bit earlier, but I kind of wanted to feel like I had a decent amount of time in the game so I could give you a good idea of what the game is like and what it has to offer. I think I have uh, roughly 30-40 hours combined between uh, PlayStation 4 and PC, so I have it on both PC and console, and for the most part it seems pretty consistent. I'm playing it on an original PlayStation and it seems to run just fine there, and then on PC it runs really good too, so the only thing I don't know is Xbox, but I'm assuming it runs fairly good there as well, but uh, yeah, we go over everything pretty quickly. If you're more curious about specifically customization or track editor, you can refer to the Super Cross the Game 2 playlist, and I did individual videos for that if you're more curious about it, but I will kind of give you my opinions on it and whatnot, and then at the end of the video I will give you my final opinions and let you know if I believe it's worth buying or not, because it is $60 on console, but it is $50 on PC. So it also would matter what platform you're buying it for. I also am not going to be reviewing multiplayer, I haven't checked it out yet for myself. I have played it in the past on other games, but the only thing I know about multiplayer here is what people have been saying from uh, I personally have not tried it. And also, before I forget, there are no two strokes in this game. I get that question a lot, and I usually forget to say it. There are no two strokes in the game, and the game is based off of the 2018 season, not the 2019 season. So, just to get that out of the way. But uh, yeah, let's jump into this, starting with the customization. Okay, so here we have bike and rider customization. And the rider customization, they did add under the gear customization where you can change how you look. You can buy a hat, sunglasses, tattoo earrings, whatever. You know, cool, some people might like it, I don't care. I wish they would have spent that time in updating the gear, you know, giving us more new gear. A lot of the gear is reused from Supercross the Game 1, MXGP Pro, or even MXGP 3. I swear some of this has been in 3. I really would like to see more new gear brought in each time they decide to do this game. And then they have uh, finishing celebrations, which you can do if you finish, uh, I think, top three. You can do a button combination over the finish line before the race finishes and do some kind of basic trick. Here you can see the bikes that are in the game. Again, no two strokes. And then the bike customization is actually pretty good. It's very similar to how it has been, but I don't have too many complaints there. They did add seat covers, I believe. The biggest complaint I have with the bike customization is the fact that the graphics kits are just not good. They've been pretty much the same since like MXGP2. I mean, they just haven't really changed. People want to ride for official teams. Maybe it's a licensing problem. I don't really know, but I would hope that if it was possible, that would be a high priority because people want that as far as customization goes. It's just nobody really is happy with the basic graphics kits that the game has to offer. And then you can uh, change the color of pretty much any part of the bike. Now at the very end here, I do add in the setup. You can set up the bike how you want. And that's pretty typical for how most milestone games are where you can set up the bike and make it, uh, make it work how you want it to. Okay, so here we have the track editor, and this is probably, in my opinion, the best part about the game. I mean, it has to have good gameplay, good physics too, but the best part and what adds the most replay value is the track editor. I mean, after using it for a while, it kind of can feel a bit basic, but they did give it a facelift. They did take a few things out, but they added a few new things, and enough that I was pretty happy with it, and what, again, gives the most replay value for me. They added uh, some more corners, they gave us some more specialty things, they added some new pre-made jumps. I mean, overall, this was what I had the most fun doing, was making tracks and then uh, trying them out and trying other people's tracks. And then here at the end, I show you that you can validate your track and upload it online and then go into single player or time attack, download your track or download other people's tracks and uh, play them and test them out. So pretty awesome. Used to be able to do it in multiplayer. I don't know if you still can, but uh, at least in the first game, you it was uh, it was an option.
Okay, so for the career, I don't really have too much to say here. Basically, you get to plan out your week before race weekend. You have your rest days, which you can't change. The other days, you can train, do challenges, promotional day, or media day. Uh, you satisfy what your sponsors are asking of you. You earn fame. When you train, you make your rider better and improve his skills. And challenges unlock certain things in the compound, which I'll show you here in a little bit. So the career is more in-depth. It's better. But it still feels pretty similar to like an MXGP Pro Supercross of Game 1 with a few slight uh, changes. Okay, so we're going to check out the compound here a tiny bit. I do believe that this compound is much better than MXGP Pro and even better than Supercross of Game 1. Which is funny because Supercross of Game 1 was a paid for DLC when this compound comes with the base game. So I'm happy that they didn't try charging for it, which they usually don't. It is kind of different. They have this weird freestyle area. They have these weird big wooden ramps placed throughout the compound, which is kind of fun in a really weird arcade kind of way. Now, the negative is, well, the positive, they have a bunch of tracks. The negative is they're blocked off. You can see those orange yellow barriers. You can't access those tracks in free ride compound until you do a certain amount of challenges in the career. You have to do a certain amount of challenges first and get those done and then it slowly unlocks the the tracks in the compound, which is a bummer. Hard to complain because it is free. It, you know, they could have charged DLC for it like they did before, but they didn't. But it does suck because I do believe they did that to force people to check out their new career. They tried marketing the game heavily off of their new career. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna we're gonna lock the compound tracks and force them into the career to do a certain amount of challenges and stuff before they can actually access the entire compound. Kind of a bummer, but I get that that was probably the easiest way for them to make you go check out their career because you're gonna wanna unlock it, you're gonna get tired of having those orange barriers everywhere, but the compound's really big, it's gorgeous to look at, there's a bunch of tracks, it's actually probably one of the better compounds that uh, Milestone has given us. Okay, so Ghost Racing is in the game. It is by default, I believe, when you go into Time Attack, set to Ghost Racing. If you, before you, at the menu, before you get to the actual track, you can turn it off. You can go back to just having your, your best time and not actually having to race the ghost if you find that annoying, but I know a lot of people do enjoy having their ghost to race against. It gives them something to push for, uh, I suppose. But uh, yeah, ghost racing is in Supercross the Game 2. Okay, so if you're new to Milestone games or Supercross the game in general, you can have weather conditions. You can ride around in the rain, the mud, clear, cloudy, or random if you want to be surprised. It is kind of a nice addition to the game. I mean, they've had it for a while, and it affects you in a more realistic way, you know? If you were getting that Supercross triple before, especially on the 250, you very well might not be getting it when it's muddy or rainy. Uh, I personally don't really use it that much it's a neat addition and adds more realism to the career or to championship but if i'm just doing regular races or multiplayer uh like i said i haven't done multiplayer here but it was in the first game we always choose clear i mean very rarely does anybody ever want to play in the rain it's just not it's more realistic it sucks a bit of fun out of it you know so i don't know if mud is your thing or rain and you want realism, well, here you go. Milestone has given you weather conditions in Supercross the Game 2. All right, so I'm gonna try to show you the AI riders here the best I can and how difficult they can be. Oh yeah, Ken Roxon's not in the game. I forgot to mention that. They basically substituted Ken Roxon for Eli Tomac, but uh, we're on a 250 here. Uh, it's fully upgraded. It's a custom rider that I'm using, and we gave him till the first corner basically, and then we took off. And I'm gonna tell you right away, the 250 AI on realistic difficulty, which is the highest difficulty, is relatively easy. 
we pretty much catch them. I mean, they don't really spread out, and that's a problem in the 450 and 250 class. You get this pack of them that just won't spread out. Very one line, and we catch them by about the finish line. So after about a lap, we're battling for fourth or fifth place, I don't remember. And it was only a few more corners before I passed into first. Had a few crashes, it was a medium length race, and went off track once or twice. Still managed to win. Relatively easy, and I'm not really that great at the game. So the AI on the 250s, is, or in the 250s, is pretty easy. And I did test at a few different tracks. The AI can be better at certain tracks, but for the most part, uh, they're pretty easy. They're, they're just pretty easy, especially once you get on a fully upgraded bike. And I believe we have like a seven second lead after the race is over, a medium length race. Again, I did crash a few times, went off track a little bit, still was pretty easy. Switching over to the 450s here, we give them the same head start. I didn't use a custom rider because I didn't have the credits to fully upgrade a 450, but uh, you know, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. Give them the same head start and catch them at pretty much the same time. The problem is we're not battling for third or fourth by the time one lap is over. We're battling for sixth or seventh or eighth place, maybe even farther. And the AI is much more willing to pass you back. And I spent a majority of my time as I was going through the pack, instead of making each pass stick, they were willing to come back and pass you back. And you just kind of battled back and forth. And yeah, if you have any sort of crash or go off track, that is gonna hurt you a lot more too. So the AI in the 450 class is significantly more difficult. Now, for you pro guys that are like, the, the, the AI is super easy, man. You're just not good at it. Maybe, but not all of us can be pros and play the game 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For most of us, the 450s are significantly harder. And even for the good players, like the best players, you may shred the 450 class, but that doesn't change the fact that the 450 AI is much more difficult. And I believe we finish up in like eighth place. Wow, what a race. Let's take a look at the official results from the main event. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the physics a tiny bit here. Basically, the ground physics in this game remind me most of MXGP Pro. They're like an improved version, a polished version of MXGP Pro in Supercross the game. They don't really remind me of Supercross the game at all. I mean, not really. And what's gonna happen is if you buy this game, you're going to start it up, do your first race and you're gonna go flying over a berm or you're gonna go flying past a, a corner, the first turn, whatever. And you're gonna say, it feels like I'm driving a semi on a supercross track because the brakes are slightly delayed and the cornering is just a little bit on the weird side. That's what's gonna happen. Best thing I can say is switch over to advanced pro physics, get rid of the joint brakes and do the training in the career. It helps, it helps to some degree it doesn't make it perfect. I believe it helps a little bit. Some people have said it helps a lot, but I really feel it helps a little bit. But overall, the cornering is just gonna be different. It feels different. I don't know if it's better. I think it adds a skill gap, but I don't know if it's better than the first game. Better than pro, but I don't know if it's better than the first game. So it has a learning curve then. You can lean the analog stick forward when you're trying to turn sharp. It does help a little bit. There's things you can do that can improve it. Overall, it's a lot slower than it was in the first game. And it just feels different. It feels closest to MXGP Pro. Moving over into the in-air physics, the bike and rider are still relatively stiff. They feel a bit more free than they have in the past, but it still is pretty stiff. The scrubs actually seem to matter this time around. You actually, it feels like you can actually hit the face of a jump scrubbing and it affects the bike uh, more so than ever before if you do it before you leave the jump. And then if you're just throwing a, a regular whip, it's the same, push the sticks together, pull them apart, but then you can move the analog sticks 
around like forward or back and kind of manipulate and change the way the whip looks and it is more free than it has been in the past but it's still very much a milestone whip are they free no do i want to see free whips yes the rotation of the whip is a bit slow like when he throws it out to the side it can be a little bit on the slow side and bringing it back but after you do it a few times you kind of get used to it and you can get more than this you know in a lot of milestone games the whip always look the same in this game you can kind of get a few different looking whips and I, re I really don't care no whips at all in the game i would still buy the game and enjoy it i know that's like the biggest selling point for some people but it's not for me but if it is for you that's kind of how they work and how they feel do they look better than pro i 100 percent believe so yes do they look better than supercross the game one i don't know sometimes maybe sometimes maybe not it's kind of i don't know it, it's just different it is different so that's kind of how that works so putting the ground physics and the in-air physics together it kind of makes you take a more realistic line around the track i mean in the first game you can still huck some pretty big lines and you can do it in this game too but you run the risk of crashing a lot easier and it's just not as easy to get the bigger lines as it was in the first game i tell you what if I don't get the good drive out of the corner, I might not even get one of the Supercross triples. I might have to completely let off and double single instead of get the Supercross triple. It's tougher to find a good flow. There is that skill gap and a learning curve. So the physics of this game are different from the first game. I feel like they more closely resemble MXGP Pro than Supercross the game, but much more polished. I feel like it's kind of a combination of both. That's my opinion of uh how the physics work in supercross the game 2. okay so here are a few final thoughts on supercross the game 2. basically i believe that a lot of people that pick this game up are going to get frustrated with it right away because the cornering and the braking are so weird they feel so different i believe that that is going to frustrate some people, but if you give it a chance, train your rider, upgrade the bike, switch over to advanced uh, pro physics, uh, what else, and just play, get used to it, I really think it'll kind of grow on you. Will you like it more than the first game? Not necessarily. I still can't answer the question of, is this game better than the first one? In some areas, I feel like it is. In some areas, I feel like it's not. So it's kind of uh, equal, in my opinion. But it is going to have a bigger learning curve and it's just going to be tougher. It's going to be tougher. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is that the ruts are there. You can carve lines, but it doesn't really seem to affect the bike. Another thing I forgot to mention is that the tough blocks can become solid steel. If you're doing anything besides an idle and brush a foot peg against a tough block, you're going down. You're going down. Kind of takes me back to those MXGP2 days where you had the solid steel tough blocks. Kind of takes me back to those days, but uh, yeah, I believe it's worth it. I just figure most people will get frustrated with it right away. Give it a chance, give yourself some time, and I think it will kind of grow on you. But uh, I mean, I really believe Milestone is going to have to free up the in-air physics eventually and probably tweak on these ground physics a little bit. Even if you enjoy it, I really feel like there's a lot of people that are going to be okay with it, but don't prefer the way these ground physics are. So I do believe that it is worth the buy. It has decent replay value with the track editor, similar to the first game. And the new career adds a decent amount of replay value. Even if it's not like amazingly different or better, it gives you more reason to do the career because you have to train your rider and do the challenges to finish unlocking the compound. So yes, I do believe it has decent replay value and is worth the buy, even if it's not landslides different than uh, the first game was. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I hope it could help. Let me know in the comments if you decided to pick it up and how you feel about it. Do you recommend it? Uh, is it a game to go and pick up or not? Let me know in the comments. But you guys and girls are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for the support on the channel and this series so far. It really does mean a lot. And until the next video, take it easy.